Hi there. Um, I want to talk about some important stuff, and the important stuff is the dinky stuff. And when I say the dinky stuff, I mean the uh, little things that everyone is required to have in the backcountry, and that means things like the toothbrush and the sunblock. Uh, and and the, you, this is a place where a lot of people go overboard. I'm going to cover this in part one. And then in part two, I'm going to cover the repair kit and the first aid kit. I'm going to cover them very thoroughly. And also in part two, I'm going to cover the contents of the stove and the cooking kit. Okay, there's a lot of information. Get ready. I'm going to start this all off by talking about the dinky stuff. And when I say dinky stuff, I mean the little camping items that we all have and that are required to go into the mountains. And this is a place where people can go really overboard. Uh, the contents of this little Ziploc baggie ain't much. And uh, I'm going to go through each piece one by one. Okay, item one is the Aquamira. This gets packaged in an A and B bottle. This is uh, the actual liquid from the larger bottles is repackaged into these smaller bottles. And also included in this little snack bag is a tiny little mix bottle. And this little mix bottle is the focus of another um, video that I that's also on this site. Now what I use for a fire starter is just a little mini Bic lighter. Now this little lighter is uh, just the kind of thing you get at the gas station. Nothing fancy. It weighs less than a half an ounce. I find these very, very reliable. I have taken off the childproof thingy at the top there with a needle nose plier and that helps a lot, especially with cold hands. My backup is just a single book of matches. Uh, this is just the paper book of matches. Nothing fancy here and um, I keep it in a tiny Ziploc bag. Um, it's obviously important to have a backup. This is the lightest thing I've ever found to light a fire, is a paper book of matches. I take sunblock, I repackage it in a smaller little vessel, uh, and then I just am cautious how much I use. I also travel mostly with long sleeves and uh, long pants, uh, partially just so I don't have to use as much sunblock. For a sharp thing, I have a tiny little single edge razor blade that I keep in a cardboard envelope. I just made this cardboard envelope out of cereal packaging. This weighs, with the packaging, uh, 0.1 ounce. So this, it doesn't get any lighter than this. Uh, in a, and uh, I don't want to keep a, a sharp object inside my backpack, so I put it inside this homemade little cardboard envelope just made out of a cereal box. I wrap it up with this high-tech rubber band and um, yeah, it doesn't get any lighter than that. And I also find that I almost never use it. If I plan ahead properly, I uh, don't really have that much to cut in the field. I always, always, always take a tiny bottle of soap. Now the soap uh, is a superior item to what a lot of people carry. And this is hand sanitizer. This is just alcohol-based hand sanitizer from the uh, grocery store. Um, I've repackaged both of these into smaller bottles. If I had to take only one, I would only take the soap. It is far superior in uh, being able to clean yourself up and for sanitary issues like uh, washing your hands after using the bathroom. I have a beautiful toothbrush. It's a toothbrush that I snipped the bottom off with a pair of wire cutters. Cut the toothbrush in half. Yeah, it's the uh, the sign of any uh, real deal ultralighter. And along with the toothbrush, I have toothpaste dots. Now these are nothing more than little clots of toothpaste that I dried out on a plate and uh, snipped with a little knife and dropped them in this little plastic bag. Uh, also in the plastic bag is a, is a little bit of baking powder. Just they feel a little sticky if I don't do that and they get stuck to the inside of the bag. Uh, when it comes time to brush my teeth at night, I will pop one of these in my mouth, chew it like gum while I get my toothbrush out and then uh, it seems to work great. I also take uh, uh, lip stuff and I will say that the sunblock that I use works great on my lips. I don't really need the lip stuff. There's moisturizing properties in the sunblock and it works fine for my lips, so sometimes I'll leave this behind. Uh, I don't find I need it if I have the sunblock, and the sunblock that I use is Neutrogena 45 and I find it works just fine on my lips. Another item I always carry is Hydropel, and I've repackaged it in this small little balm jar. And it's this uh, slippery, oily stuff, and the inactive ingredient is petroleum jelly, and the active ingredient 
creates a sort of friction barrier for uh, avoiding um, blisters. Now this is, uh, it's referred to as a sports ointment and uh, it's been used by marathon runners and it's made a transfer over into the ultralight community and the long distance hiking community and I advocate this stuff very strongly. It's about 20 bucks a tube so it's expensive. This tube has lasted me uh, three years. And here's an item that I take sometimes but not all the time. This is just bug repellent. This is a citronella based bug repellent and it's just been repackaged in a smaller vessel. Also repackaged in a smaller vessel, something I take sometimes, is just a little talcum powder. And, uh, and I just find that can be very useful. Uh, and uh, another thing I take sometimes is an extra lid for my water bottle. And uh, for obvious reasons, losing this would be catastrophic. This is a very minimal weight uh, to add to my pack it, it, as a just-in-case item. And then something I dearly love, especially if I'm hiking in the desert, is uh, just some eye drops. Uh, I just find that my eyes can get very, very dry in the backcountry. Here's another simple plastic bag that I carry with me, and in this plastic bag I carry my maps. Now, uh, along with the maps, I carry a compass. This is just a simple, uh, lightweight compass. Nothing fancy about it, but this is an important piece of gear. The maps that I use, I uh, cut down, and I also have a pencil here, just in case sometimes need to make notes, I just use a short little pencil. I've taken these maps and cut them down from um, the size that they originally started at. Uh, and it makes it a lot easier and a lot lighter, and I'm very cautious to make sure that I have the correct maps when I'm traveling, but I don't need giant maps. Um, I'm very content with these small cut-down maps. Another thing that I advocate and works great for me is putting a headlamp and sewing it directly onto my hat. This is just a simple polyester hat. Um, I've been using it for years. It fits my head great. It's the lightest hat I had, and I have a lot of hats, uh, and I just started using that one for my backpacking when I go ultralight because it is the lightest. And then I've just taken this Petzl headlamp, which is called a Petzl E-Light. It's a lamp I recommend, and um, it has a simple little clip and it clipped right to my hat, and then I just put a few stitches of dental floss in there so it stays on. Uh, when it's cold at night, I'll want my warm hat on, and when it's nighttime, I'll want a headlamp. So this way I can sleep with the headlamp on and get up in the morning before dawn and always have the headlamp connected to my head, and it's always connected to my hat, so I always know where it is. So what you've just seen, that covers all the dinky stuff. Coming up in part two, I'm going to look at everything in the first aid kit, which is very light, and everything in the repair kit. I'm going to look at every single item in detail, as well as the cook kit. Watch part two.